So this is the ethanol plant, no? This is the ethanol plant. It doesn't look like a classic Scottish distillery, does it? <laughs> it doesn't look like a Scottish it's a, it's, it's located in an industrial zone. Uh, we have a sugar mill right outside the distillery. And this whole unit, uh, the malting unit is where we are going to go. But this unit is the ethanol plant, uh, where we are distilling ethanol uh, for, uh, for various purposes, both portable and non-portable ethanol. And uh, we can produce up to 120,000 liters of ethanol every day out of this unit, actually. Is it a continuous process? This is a continuous process, yeah. You produce a lot of ethanol every day. Yeah. And mainly yeah. from? Well, uh, rice. We use uh, rice as a raw material. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we use corn also. Okay. Yeah. This is a grain silo. And its capacity is 2,500 metric ton. We store rice in it. Green whiskey production. For the green whiskey production, yeah. yeah. So, uh, the most interesting part about the distillery is the warehouse that we have. It is the biggest in India. Mm -hmm. This wall that you see over here, right from this corner uh, to that corner, uh, is one roof. And can you believe that we have about 40,000 barrels just sitting inside this. Inside this building? Inside this building, you know. Wow. How many people are working in the distillery? In the distillery, around 250 people are working. Yeah. Including bottling, plant. It is 24 by 7. This is where our Malt spirit is being distilled every single day. And uh, this entire building encapsulates the fermentation tanks. This is where the grains come down. And this is where the copper stills are churning out the malt spirits every single day. Uh, come ahead, we will show you uh, what it is. On the right hand side is the entrance to the, uh, to the warehouse, this gigantic warehouse that I spoke about. So we will be starting off with the malting unit, uh, the malt distillery, and then going to the warehouse on on the side of the um, of the building as you see these are natural warehouses they're not temperature controlled and uh, the the interesting part is that temperature in this particular region where our distillery is located the winters can go down to zero degrees celsius and the summers can go up to 50 degrees celsius so it's like as if you're standing in a furnace uh, if you are over here during summers, which is usually from May, June, July, uh, so that's that's where it is. This is a truck that's collecting the spent grain uh, after it's after the mashing. After the mashing. mashing. After the mashing, yes, please. How? Yeah. Bernard, uh, this is Gyaninder. He is in charge of the distillation. So the entire distillation of Indri malt is being done by this man. Yeah. Nice to meet you. <laughs> so let's let's go ahead and yeah. see the unit here. Yeah? This is the storage area of malt. We procured malt from different vendors and we use their pitted, two row, six row, different kind of imported two row malt also. So, uh, how, how much malt do you use a day? We uh, per day, we use uh, around 18 metric ton to 20 metric ton per day. Per day? Per day, yeah. So, uh, in our distillery, we use two kinds of malt. Uh, Lana? All the malts are uh, Indian barley. Uh, so these are malted barley that comes from a maltster. These are six row barley. 
and also two row barley. So these two row barley's are Indian grown two row barley's that we are currently using, yeah. and also Indian six row malted yeah. barley. Mm -hmm. So all the barley is malted by a independent malter and comes in these gunny bags, okay. and this malted barley is then used for our distillation purposes. Please. Be unloading kakuch. So burn, if you see that this is malted barley and it's peated. And uh, it's from bar, from bar malting. That's the malter, maltster who does the malting for us. Um, and that's how the uh, gunny bags come. Um, so this is our malt storage section. You can see this is the sample of this is the sample. This is six row mark. Is it different to the two row in, in starch? Yeah, it contains lesser starch in compared to the two row. But high proteins, so you get the liquid which is very um, fruity, fruity uh, a little bit of spicy notes to it, a uh, lot more oily because more protein content in it. Uh, so although the yield is less, the six row barley gives a rich flavor to the new make spirit and to the uh, final whiskey as well. Um, so that's the malt uh, storage section. So as we empty this, the next truck comes, we load it and this is a continuous process that runs throughout the day. Uh, and sometimes in the evening as well. So uh, this is this is the beginning of our entire distillation process. So that's why we thought we'll bring you here first. Yep. This is the de-stoner where the foreign particle stones get removed from the barley. After this, it, the barley malt goes into the milling section to make the grist. The floor of the uh, malt barley contains around 20% husk, 70% is a grist and 10% is a fine floor. This uh, floor goes into the silo through this conveyor. Mm -hmm. After that, that floor goes into the lotter. So the lotter tank. This is our mashing section for the mashing purpose. Please. This is our lotter. The capacity of this lotter is around. 6.5 metric ton per batch. So you finished the batch now? Yes, yeah, I think just they are finished. No, just they have finished it. So how long is the meshing time? Uh, seven hours is the meshing time. After this this uh, all the grist will go to the in that will load it into that truck for the cattle feed purpose the extract we taken into the wash bag tank and wash bag it's uh, the word temperature we is around 65 80 uh, 6, 70 degrees centigrade from that after it uh, cooling down to 18 degrees centigrade it goes into the fermentation tank After lottering of this, our grist, it will go, the wort will go into the wash back tank. This is our wash back tank. From this wash bag, the temperature of the wort is around when it is coming from the lotter. Temperature is around 65 to 70 degrees centigrade. Through PHE and using we, we use chiller to cool it down. The wet temperature comes down to 
15 to 18 degree centigrade. This what goes into these? We have around eight numbers of fermenter goes into the fermenter. Then we add yeast into it. Which is this a special kind of yeast? Yes, using? malt. Yes, special kind that is uh, uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, and especially for the malt. It's a disclosed yeast. Actually. It's a regular disclosed yeast, but we buy from a particular supplier. Uh, yeah. where we have kind of tested out that that varietal of yeast gives yeah. maximum flavors and yeah. uh, results to our yeah. uh, uh, our product our, yeah. our core product our so product. it's a disclosed yeast yeah right? retention yeah. time in in, uh, in each fermenter is around 70, 70 to hours. 80 so degrees 80 hours 80 hours, yeah. 80 hours 70 to 80 hours of fermentation yeah. uh, the cycle. difference yeah. is that the fermentation in the summer to the fermentation time in the winter can be uh, very different yeah in the summers it's less by 10 hours but in the winters we increase the fermentation time by another 10 hours to get the same kind of uh, you know uh, same kind of uh, vote that we want to get across the capacity of these is uh the capacity of uh, each fermenter is 64000 liter but the working volume is around 57000 liter After the completion of fermentation, we transfer uh, the fermented wash into our distillation section. Now we are moving towards the this. This is our distillation section. Okay. We have uh, around three sets of pots here: three uh, wash pots and three split pots. First. These two are our uh, wash pots. The next one are split pots. So we transfer the fermented wash into the wash pots. The Here we remove whatever alcohol forms during the fermentation. We remove that for uh, the alcohol from this fermented wash. These are the condensers. Each wash pots, so we collect it into the low wine tank. That is called the alcohol. Whatever the alcohol is collected from the these wash pots is called low wine. Technically, that kind of one we collected into the low wine tank. That low wine tank wine is then taken into the split still. So uh, the wash tools are 15,000 to 25,000 liters each and the spirit tools are about 15,000 liters. Every day the maximum capacity that we can run is about 12,000 liters. That's what we can distill from all the six tools put together. So although the current capacity is six uh, stills, uh, we are planning to add another set of two more stills to the distillery uh, over the next couple of years. Four, four uh, sets of them. We four, are going four to set add of, four set of stills, not two, yeah. actually four set of stills. And all these are Indian made uh, copper pot stills. So none of designed and made in India uh, in its entirety. I have a question. They are the three spirit stills are the same design. This one is completely different. Different, yes. Uh, so uh, the what happened was that these stills are identical to each other yeah. and this was later put added to the uh, thing and that's after Surinder came in and then he wanted to make some minor adjustments to the still to see what kind of uh, liquid or the profile of the liquid that comes out so those, those are the new babies in this uh, house that's why you see a different style and design to it actually so uh, these are our spirit safe and uh, unlike most other parts of the world, we can actually open the spirit safe and taste the liquid out of the spirit safe, which is not possible in many other distilleries around the world. Um, Ganadarji, low, low wine. Yeah, low wine this, is, this is low. Uh, do we have a glass? Is this is back low wine. Uh, where is the product? Uh, product, the product comes. At product present, product is not coming. Come actually. Okay. Yeah. Product the right. No, no. This is a low wine. This is low wine, this is back low wine, the that then back then low wine, head and tail, this is for the head and okay. tail and final is the product. At present, low wine is coming, 
The product is coming from our wash box. What's the ABV of the new make you're producing? Uh, it's around 67% V by V. And with how much do you go into the cask? In cask, we 62.8% ABV. Okay. So this still uh, is something that we just purchased from another distillery uh, when they're off for sale. Uh, we are trying to utilize this still to see if we can make a good gin uh, out of this. So that's a black beauty that we have at our distillery. <laughs> uh, it's from the southern part of India. There was a distillery that was up for sale in the southern part of India. Although we did not buy the distillery as a whole, we just bought the still because our chairman liked the still the way it looked. And we just did some trial runs and it's come out really well actually. And the beauty is, if you just look through this small little space, you can see it's all just farms uh, that surrounds our distillery. So, this is our area. You can see, show them. This is the area where expansion will yeah, happen. Our expansion is also going to happen uh, this. in this area. This is where our additional set of four stills are going to come. So this is our warehouse and uh, I'm sure you'll be surprised to see the warehouse and this warehouse uh, start from uh, February 2013 we have uh, 40,000 barrels totally uh, which are uh, someone bourbon wines and uh, sherry cars. Where do you get your casks from? Yes, we are importing casks yeah. Yeah. from Portugal, from Spain, from France, from Bourbon casks, American casks. And how do you find a cask? Uh, we have each and every barrel record. Okay. Huh. Every barrel uh, record. We are maintained manually and also in uh, SAP. So we find out uh, each one barrel we are find. What spirits and uh, age, filling dates also. So the filling data made manually and uh, in SAP. So we find every barrel when we can uh, decanting barrel or refilling so all record are in our uh, record book. Uh, when our production, there is a uh, transfer from storage and uh, storage to transfer here, uh, one of that uh, of 60,000 liters and we are refilling all the barrels by fixed line, MS, uh, SS fixed lines, uh, which where we have to fill the barrel. There was a, we can take a put one uh, gazing tank with pump. Mm -hmm. So every barrel filling at the uh, point. Barrels not decay, uh, uh, we Take can, uh, can get those taken out. Huh, no. Taken out. So that's at a filling tank. Station. Yeah, this is a filling tank. We transfer the spirit from Hello. storage room to here uh, uh, this vat and from here no, we refilling the barrels by this line mm -hmm. we have put the barrel for uh, working uh, once uh, every raw monorail on up okay. so the working of barrel put and down by monorail Uh, so after the warehouse, I just wanted to show you a small cooperage that we have over here. Yes. It's not a big scale cooperage, but those barrels that are getting older, is probably filled for the second time and the third time. We kind of dechar them and rechar them in this cooperage that we have over here. That's that's right over there, and I'll I'll show you some of the work that's done over here actually. That's a small charring room that we have, and. Uh, 
that's where we are uh, charring and recharring the barrels actually. बस बस So usually for barrels that we have really used more than twice and thrice, we do this little bit of, you know, recuperating the barrels, putting them together, charring them, decharring them and fill it across. Although the flavor profile will be very different, um, uh, you know, a portion of it may go into making indri or a portion of it may not and we may use it for our malt spirit that we give to other distilleries in India. So that's what happens over here. And trust you me, it's all indigenously learned. Um, it's all done by experience over here um, so yeah so that's what it is and these coopers are doing these works on a uh, on generations basis uh, th their fathers their children uh, so it's generation of people doing such work over here and uh, they've not learned from any uh, cooperages around the world <laughs> So India. this is where the final product is decided by our master blender. So he draws liquid from different barrels, puts them together, plays with them and then he decides as to what has to go into the final product. Once the composition of the barrels is decided over here, then larger samples are drawn and then emptied into big stainless steel tanks and that's how uh, the final product is uh, matured. Um, so you can see we have seven year old wine casks over here, 10 year old wine casks over here, three year old. Um, so different ages of liquid are also uh, brought together uh, to make whatever we are making across. However, the average age of, a, of the Trini, the single malt whiskey is about six years old. Um, we do adhere to the guidelines that we don't use any malt that is less than three years old in our bottling. But the youngest is a six year old in our in all our products, the youngest is six years old, whereas the Dru has about eight years old of product into it. May I ask you on what you are working right now here at the distillery regarding uh, bottlings? Uh, so we are uh, looking at some uh, new bottlings this year. We are looking to make a peated expression this year. Uh, also, a very limited eleven year old. Uh, it's going to be a super limited expression where we are going to empty eleven casks and make the 11 year old uh, and will probably be the first distillery out of India to launch 11 year old as well. So that's a project that we are working on the immediate future actually. 
So we are entering the uh, the place where we blend uh, for our malt whiskies, and uh, and also this is where our bottling hall is, uh, where Indri is being bottled and sent around the world. Welcome. So this is these are the huge blending tanks that we have over here. So each blending tank uh, has. Uh, we rest Indri before we bottle it for at least 30 to 45 days uh, so that since the triple cask expression and marriage of liquid from bourbon, wine and sherry cask, we kind of let them marry in the tanks at least for 30 to 45 days before we actually send, take it out for bottling. Um, currently these are the, the tanks that we operate with but if you see right outside when we go out you'll see that there are more tanks that we're adding to the capacity. Um, all of them are stainless steel tanks and this is, this is what it is. That's our uh, bottling hall. Uh, this is where uh, we have two lines in operation at the moment and uh, both of them are currently being used to make Indri. We also do our blended whiskey bottling over here. You will see that the lines are... Uh, the, every process over here has a lot of manual intervention. Um, they are not highly automated speed lines, but smaller lines with a lot of, lot of human interaction. So every bottle is at least touched by 10 different people before it goes into the packaging. Okay. <laughs> you are on a space, that is why I do <laughs> Although the whiskey is filtered, uh, although the whiskey is filtered, passed on through a lenticular filter, uh, uh, the, you can see the uh, the ladies over here. They check every bottle for any foreign particles, and then uh, if they find anything, then they kind of remove the bottles over here, and it goes to the labeling, and they seal uh, the things manually, and then gets packed across. So we have hand filling machines. So. Still not automated, still not gone to a place where everything is automatic. So hand filling machines, the corks are put over here. You fill every single bottle of Indre by hand? Yes please, every single bottle of Indre is filled by hand. And as I said, at least 10 different people touch the bottle before it actually goes into the packaging. So a lot of human touch to our single malt. <laughs> So once the bottling is con completed, they go from here to the uh, storage place. That's our inventory location where goods are palletized and marked as per which country the pallet is going to. Um, so all our palletization, our strapping, lashing and loading happens uh, in our warehouse over here. Um, we are going to see that next. So uh, that's our finished goods warehouse. So all the products, both for the Indian market and for the international markets come over here. And uh, 
all sorting, labeling, any additional labels have to be pasted for a particular country. Uh, any stickers that has to go on the bottles happen over here. And, uh, and then the goods are palletized. Um, certain domestic markets don't need palletization of cargo, but anything that's sent to the Europe has to be palletized in Euro pallet, so to the US. And every pallet is marked with appropriate you know, marks so that it's identified versus the goods. And then it goes straight into the loading bay after, um, you know, whenever the, the truck is ready for dispatch, it goes across. Do you have an idea how many bottles are stored in here right now? Close to about, close to about, let's say about 60,000 bottles at least over here at the moment. And those are pallets already packed and kept. Um, the final pallets leave. Um, this is this is going to Belgium, uh, and uh, it's a pallet. There's totally six pallets going to Belgium. This is the first pallet of the six slots that's, that's that are going to Belgium. So yeah. So that's the visitor center that we are building right over there. As you know, the distillery is on the other side. So the visitor center is a project that we've been doing for the last one year, and it's due to open in another two months. And uh, while that's a visitor center, this this particular farm mm. will be converted into a golf course, like a mini, mini golf course. Uh, and uh, that's for people to come play, relax, enjoy our single malt whiskies. And uh, it's going to be a very unique North Indian style uh, visitor center. Okay, if talking about North Indian style, we are in North India here. Yes, please. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the region and what so makes North it special? North India is actually called as the football for the whole of India. Yeah. Because all the rice and the grains that is consumed across India is grown in this part of India, which is, which is what you see. So you can see that there is wheat that's being grown over mm. here. Uh, the climate makes this place very unique. Uh, because in the winters, let's say from the month of September onwards, the climate slowly starts getting cooler, cooler, cooler. And towards the end of December, January, it gets really cool, uh, where the temperature drop, drops down to about zero degrees Celsius. Yeah. And um, in the summer, um, the sun is out. Uh, we are at 25 degrees Celsius now. Uh, but in the next two months, it can go up to 48, 50 degrees Celsius. Uh, so it's a very unique climate when, with a lot of fluctuations, you know. Yeah, that makes uh, maturing whiskey pretty fast. Pretty faster. We lose about 10 to 12 percent of the liquid every year to evaporation and huge angel share. Yeah. So what will you offer in the visitor center? What to expect there? So the visitor center is going to be a place where people can come and see how a single malt whiskey is made uh, and also a place where people can taste all the malts that we produce, bottle, and the future bottlings. Um, it is also a place where people can rent out a hall to have a small party as well. Namaste. Okay, that's a kind of atrium. So you're already planning for the heat, right? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> so there's going to be a lab on the uh, on this side mm -hmm. where uh, we will be. It will become the blending room for Surinder, uh, master blender. Uh, there's going to be a tasting room, and uh, the tasting room will be for people to come, you know, taste all our expressions. Uh, a little bit of audio video of what is happening across. So this is going to be the uh, tasting room. And uh, yeah, there's going to be a beautiful bar coming over here, right? Oh, over here. I see. There's going to be a pantry over there to mm -hmm. serve some fresh food. And uh, that room uh, is going to be the the kind of room where you can have a small get together. Uh, so, if you are a bunch of family and if you want to come out and have a small get together, this will be a get together room uh, with some uh, experience of 
kind of barrels. Mm. We'll also have a souvenir shop where you can buy Indri branded souvenirs uh, when people come to the distillery, you know. Uh, and there's going to be a beautiful courtyard that's going to be built outside. Right. And that court, uh, you know, courtyard is going to have, uh, it's, a, it's a garden. So for any parties, if people want to use a garden out, outside, so that's where uh, the garden is going to come. Uh, we have the distillation process as a map over here. And uh, a few barrels cut out and laid over here mm -hmm. in the field. Maybe three months down the line when you come, you see it all being completed. I'll try my best. <laughs> Over there, there are the There's new warehouses. The new warehouses, we have three new warehouses over here, and uh, yeah, so we, we're planning to add another set of three more warehouses. Um, so these warehouses are not like the other ones that you saw, which are yeah. big warehouses, but smaller warehouses, but with bigger capacities. We're gonna add another three. Mm -hmm. uh, so that'll be that'll make us six, and we've already put in permission for to add another two more warehouses actually. So, so what will be the storage capacity in total then? Uh, the old warehouse yeah. can house about forty thousand yeah. to forty-five thousand barrels. The combined capacities of these three are another fifty thousand barrels. So we're looking to have at least a hundred thousand barrels over the next year and a half. Mm. You know that's what we are planning. Um, hopefully we should be able to achieve <laughs> that. Yeah. So let's move in there. Yep. So um, Vikrant uh, manages this warehouse and uh, this warehouse, these three warehouses, we've got more of the younger barrels. When I say younger barrels, that have been purchased over the last couple of years and not the historical barrels. Um, you can see that we have a number of wine barrels over here. Mm -hmm. We also have some cognac barrels. Uh, bourbon barrels which are from Jim Beam, Jack Daniels, uh, Four Roses, Buffalo Trace because we buy from cooperages yeah. and brokers and not directly from the distilleries yes. yet. Uh, so this mixed number of barrels we also have some uh, you know you can see the PX uh, sherry casks um, from Spain sitting right over there. We also have some Marcella wine barrels, uh, some Sauterne cask uh, so we're maturing a lot of stuff which are new and different and we also want to try and see how we can finish yeah. uh, different, uh, you know, whiskies in different types of cask and what, yeah. can, what will come out so is, is for the future. Still doing a lot of experiments. Yes, we are doing a lot of experimentation. Uh, we also ha are trying out some, um, you know, different varietals of the Indian barley as well mm -hmm. uh, in this warehouse. Are you also experimenting with yeast? Uh, we're not really experimenting with yeast. I think what we have understood is that after a lot of experimentation, mm -hmm. I think Surinder has kind of finalized on one varietal of yeast mm -hmm. that gives us the best kind of, uh, uh, you know, flavors and uh, yield. Yeah. So what we are trying to do over here is we're trying to empty the barrels and get them into this pipeline so that you can then transfer it to a tank so that it can be taken out for blending purposes. Okay, you don't have to take the barrels out of the... Out of the place. Okay. It's clever. And it goes through the whole rack. Yeah. So we know that this is a six row barley, uh, a six row barley that's filled on the uh, September of 2022. So the liquid has a six row barley filled on the 17th September 2022. And it's cask number 42604. Over here, if you see that, it's an uh, the peat is an imported uh, peat. Mm -hmm. So it's filled on again September 2022. So when it's peated, we have marked it peated. And uh, where do you import the peat from? Uh, the peat, of course, comes from Scotland. Scotland. Yeah. yeah, but you peat it here. If you peat it here, yeah. Okay. Would you have Indian peat available? Uh, no, there are no known sources of peat in India. There are absolutely no known sources of peat in India. So we are relying on peat from outside India to come in. But what we do is we just bring the peat. Uh, as peat box and then we smoke the Indian barley uh, with the peat. 
So that's what we are doing now. But we are not sure about the future uh, because we'll be pushed to a situation if we have to make a peated liquid, then it has to be peated barley from Scotland, mm. which is not the peat. So if you see that this is the Oloroso 500 liter sherry butt, mm -hmm. and it's got an Indian, IND, Indian peated uh, liquid in it, and that's cast number 4589. That's, that's how it is. It's filled in 2022 April. So not whiskey yet? Uh, it's Close not a whiskey to. yet, yes. Uh, so that's a Oloroso. Uh, mm. All these are Oloroso parts that you see over here. So those are Konya casks that we recently got. And uh, we've got a bunch of Konya casks in those entire layer. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to see how the Indian 6 row barley gets finished or matured in Konya casks across. These are some virgin oak casks. Mm -hmm. uh, if you see, this is an American virgin oak chart level three. We filled a six row barley in it, and uh, it's it's just getting matured at this point of time. Um, so this was filled in uh, June 2023. So it's just uh, not even a year old. So we are seeing what is going to happen to these um, the liquid over here. So bunch of this entire row that you see is yeah. all virgin oak casks. 210 barrels of virgin oak casks, actually. So these are uh, Marsala wine barrels that have come across, filled in 2023 again, May 2023. These are some of the new barrels. We have about 65 of them over mm -hmm. here. So these are historic barrels that we've got from a farmer, a wine mm -hmm. farmer in Burgundy uh, in, in France. And uh, we just went and took whatever he was having uh, and, and got it down to the distillery over here. Um, Pretty, uh, probably about 80, 90 years old. And uh, yeah, so we don't know how the liquid is gonna turn out from this one. So you, you can see that the casks are very different from the other casks, the way they've been sealed and the way it's been kept. 